Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I've had a, a uh, heavy few days with uh, events in Melbourne and I had a couple of videos that were removed by YouTube so I've got no idea how long I'm still going to be up there. So I'm going to just deal with something else that's come uh, my way. I just want to make a brief comment. Uh, so um, just a few days, maybe a week ago, uh, there was this headline um, which made international headline. Well, to say the least, uh, I've been slightly confused or perplexed by this because, uh, well, I'll tell you in a few minutes. So let's just have a look at uh, at what is being said. Okay, so this is from uh, Niwa. Um, okay, this is from Niwa, which is uh, New Zealand's equivalent of NOAA. Uh, winter 2020. New Zealand's warmest winter on record. New Zealand has just experienced its warmest winter on record, according to NIWA climate data. NIWA's seven uh, station temperature series, which began in 1909, shows that 2020 winter was 1.14 above average, just nudging out winter 2013 from the top spot which was 1.08 above average. This year's result also means seven of the 10 warmest winters on record in New Zealand have occurred since the year 2000. So, and then he puts, why was the winter warm? Um, subtropical winds, warm seas, high pressure, and climate change. Or well, why the, does he put climate change into a category of its own, whereas all of those things are as a result of climate change? Okay, so I'm going to go on and explain why I am confused by this, because I've been following uh, well, I can't follow, I don't have uh, 19 uh, stations av available to me, but I do have uh, my own uh, backyard uh, here in Ellistown in Lower Hutt, which uh, most people, New Zealanders would agree is not one of the warmest places in New Zealand. It's usually pretty cold and miserable, especially in winter. So these are the, uh, the statistics that I, um, I look at, um, so uh, uh, the average uh, maximum temperature for July is 11 degrees or 52 degrees Fahrenheit and the average temperature is uh, 9 degrees or 47. Uh, so that's nothing like what we've been uh, seeing. So I did some analysis. I took a whole month uh, last year and uh, I looked at the, uh, at the temperatures. I measured them every day. Uh, I measured the nighttime maximum, the nighttime minimum, the daytime maximum, and the daytime minimum. Um, and there were very few, there were just a few gaps. So this is uh, basically a summation of what I found. So uh, now, the highest daytime temperature was 17.8 degrees Celsius, but this is the stinger. The highest nighttime temperature was 17 degrees Celsius. Now, this is at the height of winter. Um, and if you go back, I'm sure you'll find that there were several, um, several days in July, um, that almost reached that figure. So that was um, 
yeah, so the, uh, whereas I found that the, uh, the average nighttime temperature was 13.7, the average daytime temperature was 15.5. So, and we compare that with uh, the historical average. Uh, here we are, the average maximum temperature of 11 degrees, uh, the average minimum temperature of five degrees. Um, so, so as I said, what yields out from the figures, apart from the warmer temperatures overall, is the warm nights and the narrow difference between nighttime and daytime temperatures, 13.7 degrees Celsius average nighttime maximum compared with 15 uh, uh, point five. Um, yeah, so, and I've always remembered th this from hearing an interview with uh, Jim Salinger, who is probably the New Zealand climate scientist that I trust the most. And he said, what you'll notice is uh, big changes in winter. You'll see the disappearance of frost and you'll see exactly what he's he, he's talking about here, uh, this uh, disappearance of the of the um, the difference between daytime and nighttime, and that. So I have to point out that last year was the only year that I've actually done this uh, for a full uh, uh, for a full month. So I don't have figures for the other years, but. Uh, they were definitely uh, very, very warm years. 2016 was an El Nino year, and we had uh, yeah, a terrible, or a series of terrible summers. I don't really remember what the winters were like. So uh, that, is, that is my own sort of subjective uh, thing, just based on my experience in one little corner of, of New Zealand. But the other, is um, is this? This goes back, I think, to uh, the beginning of last year, and we had this um, this hot blob in the um, in the Tasman, which Niwa is referring to, uh, and it really did bring some very warm temperatures. So here goes another another version of the same thing from a slightly different date. Okay, and that's how it looks today. So Niwa uh, ascribes 2020, uh, the warmest year on record, allegedly, uh, to these really warm uh, temp sea temperatures. But is that a fact? This is today. This is how it looks, 2020, at the end of winter. And just compare it with that. Okay, so yeah, this is just going back. Uh, the Tasman, uh, this is something on my blog. Tasman sees marine heat wave. If you've jumped in the sea this summer and found it to be a surprisingly warm temperature, that's because the Tasman Sea is currently going through a marine heat wave. Since November, the water has been more than two degrees above average. In fact, it's been the warmest ever on records going back to 1900 for December at least. And while that feels great for beachgoers, it's not great for ocean species. Extreme systems like this can have a profound effect on marine ecosystems. So we've had that for the last two years. This, this was last year, I think. Um, and we haven't had any headlines like this in, in 2020 for reasons that are obvious. Uh, now, this gives a clue to me because, I mean, I really am perplexed by how they could ever come up with this idea that 2020 is the warmest uh, year on record in New Zealand, which it quite patently was not. So uh, I've just taken this from an article that appeared last year. In, um, in the New Zealand Herald, and I've just highlighted some of the things that I think are important. A climate scientist, that's Jim Salinger, says last month, 
was New Zealand's warmest July on the books. So he's talking about the, uh, the July of 2019, I think. Um, anyway, he's saying it was the New Zealand's warmest July on the books going by a measure that took in more than the official number of stations, right? Niwa is shortly to release the official statistics for July, that's July last year, which uh, its meteorologist Ben Knoll said last week was on track to finish somewhere in the top five. Yeah, well you tell me that that makes sense. New Zealand's warmest July ever recorded at 1.8 degrees Celsius above average came in in 1998. Now, uh, 1998, I believe was an El Nino year. Just as that year's de yeah, devastating El Nino climate system was dissipating. Towards the end of last month, the official July temperature record was tracking at about 1.5 degrees Celsius above average. Niwa used the benchmark long running seven station series, but Professor Jim Salinger, who helped create that program, before he was sacked by Niwa because he was too outspoken about climate change, has looked at the picture using 22 land stations. By that wider measure, July's land temperatures had finished up at a record 1.79 degrees Celsius above average, while the Tasman Sea had come in at 0.72 Celsius. Now that is something that I can take to the bank and it accords with everything that I've been seeing. Um, and yeah, just with everything that I've been seeing. Um, so it goes on, the 30 month run in which each month had finished above uh, respective temperatures for the 1981, 2010 period, including some of the most dramatic climate events ever observed in New Zealand, among them a hottest summer 2017-18, a second hottest year 2018, a hottest month January 2018, and two marine heat waves, one which could be considered freakish even amid anticipated 2050 conditions. Yeah, now that says a lot. The combined effect could be seen in the Southern Alps snow-starved glaciers, which one scientist recently described as sad and dirty after another major melt. This is probably one of the more realistic articles I've ever seen in the New Zealand media about climate change. Now, I've got a quote here um, from Jim Salinger. I don't know uh, quite where it comes from, uh, but this, uh, he says, our hottest summer, 2017 to 18, our second hottest year, 2018, our hottest month, January 2018, and two marine heat waves, one of which would likely be considered freakish, even amid anticipated 2050 conditions. So there we have it. I just want to talk briefly about one other thing. Um, over the years, I've found that uh, when I have been uh, measuring uh, my own temperatures, they diverge by quite a few degrees um, from uh, what the official thing when, it, when I open my computer and it tells me kind of what the weather in Lower Hutt um, is. Um, so I'm just going to give an example uh, from uh, today. So when I woke up uh, this morning, I, um, I turned on my iPad and the first thing I see is it tells me that the, uh, the temperature uh, was 14 uh, degrees and that was going to be, I think, I think I interpret this as a minimum of, of t uh, 14 degrees and I thought, that's pretty funny. It feels a bit warmer than that. So um, I went outside and I put the thermometer on um, outside the living room in the garden. And um, it actually 
told me that the temperature was 17.9 degrees um, and not um, and not 14 degrees and um, so I had a wee look and uh, this was uh, one forecast that said that the maximum was going to be 15. Well, already at breakfast, it was almost 18 degrees. Uh, and then I went to Met Service, who is probably the, you know, the source of greatest reliability. And it told me, um, well, that it's going to be 16 degrees and a minimum of eight degrees. And uh, again, at breakfast, it was almost, um, almost 18 degrees. So how do we uh, account for this? Um, I had an interesting conversation last year when I was putting all my uh, figures together, which I've shown you. I rang the Met Service and I got a very nice young lady and um, I said, oh, these are the temperatures I've been coming up with and they seem to, to diverge quite you know, a lot from, 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 from your official information on your, um, on your website. You said, oh no, your figures are, are quite correct. Uh, the figures that we use um, are based on models. Uh, so in other words, it's some sort of expectation. Um, so she said um, that actually, you know, there are weather station in Lower Hutt and he is uh, he's coming up with figures that are sort of broadly commensurable with what you're finding. And if you um, if you go down further into the uh, into the the website, you know you can find that information. And that was about a year ago, and now I find that they've changed the website, and that information is uh, no longer there. Um, so they do say here that the actual temperature was 16 degrees when in fact it was 17.9. Uh, uh, so that already is quite a, a, a divergence. So this is the sort of thing, and of course, um, you know, the, the temperatures on these official sites are always lower, never higher than what I'm measuring. So I just found that interesting. And I just have the impression that all the, the kind of weather agencies, they're really uh, uh, kind of de facto uh, climate change deniers because they're always trying to sort of prove to you that what you're seeing is actually uh, quite normal and they do it by a kind of uh, sleight of hand. So. I don't really believe too much. I don't believe, you know, uh, you know the, the reports on the weather that we're getting. Uh, and I don't believe the, uh, the figures and the information that comes out of organizations like NIWA. Um, and uh, well, yeah, that's, 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 that's where we're at. So, uh, yeah, the the um, uh, the hottest winter on on record um, this year, 2020. No, I think not. I think uh, all the years uh, from 2016, 17, 18, 19, they were probably all warmer than 2020. So anyway, yeah, there's something not quite right in all of this. So that's enough from me, um, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.